Hello, welcome back. I thought we would continue our discussion of Christmas gift ideas with a ball-end hook. This is a heavy-duty coat hook that can be made into a row of hooks mounted on a back plate or just used individually. They're wonderful single hooks and they have a little ball to help protect clothing from being damaged by hanging on a sharper hook. There are no real special tools used in this. I hot punch these holes so we may use a hot punch but you could also drill the holes so it's entirely up to you. The starting material for these hooks is quarter by one by eleven inches long. You could certainly make them a little longer, a little shorter. There's nothing that says they have to be this size. They all end up just a little bit different anyways. I keep this. The only reason there's a hole in there is I hang this on the wall so I know what to start with and I know what my first step is and then I know where to go from there. So I have these two sample pieces that I keep hanging on the wall for when I make these hooks. So let's get some material hot and let's go make a hook. Our first step for the ball end hook is going to be creating this little square offset or pad, whatever you want to call it, that will become the ball end and then tapering the hook. To isolate this mass we have a few choices. Remember you don't have to have special tooling and I'll show you how to do that. But let's start. My preferred method is a guillotine tool with butchering dies. This makes for a very clean shoulder. And we want to go, this is one inch wide stock, we want to go an inch or maybe a hair more, inch and a quarter perhaps. And that creates a very good shoulder. We want to be a little deeper than that. It pays to turn it over. That's about what we want right there. But if you don't have the guillotine tool, what's another option? So another option would be a spring fuller. It will not create as sharp a shoulder, but it will create a nice little shoulder. So that's not a bad way to start. Normally I would want that a little bit thinner, but we'll go to option number three real quick. So we'll demonstrate the third technique on this same end. That's just working it right here at the edge of the anvil. Keep your hammer, the edge of your hammer lined up with the edge of the anvil and you can create a very nice shoulder. This is the higher skill method and if you're trying to develop skills this is the one I would go for. If you're just trying to produce a whole bunch of hooks one of the others may be better for you. I'm going to round these corners just to get them out of my way. Now I want to taper this out. It'll take a couple of heats. In one side I want to taper about a third and in the other side about two-thirds till they, the tapers meet. We do want this to get a little bit thicker as we taper it which is what it wants to do, but not real thick. And then we're going to want to round this up a little bit, especially right up here at the, the ball end. It just looks better in the long run, I think. taper that back just a little bit more. That's probably about as far back as I want to go. Let's thin that up a little bit. You can see it's getting pretty thick right through there. Round up the edges nicely. People are going to be hanging their clothes on this. You don't want sharp edges or sharp points or snags or anything else. You 
give this to your mom for Christmas and she hangs her cashmere sweater on it and snags it, she's not going to be happy with you. This is just rounding and flattening at this point. No real foraging at this low heat. But it does help get all the scale off of it. Now I'm not going to do the ball yet. I want to taper the other end before we do any of the ball work and get both ends looking about the same. I'm going to knock the corners off the end here just to keep from being in the way. The hammer knocks off the four corners far corner and the edge of the anvil acts in opposition to knock off the near corner. That makes me less likely to hit it as I come in here to do this taper. I want to taper this back evenly until it comes right to where I stopped the other taper. Remember, don't let it get too thick. A little thicker than the original quarter inch is good right there because it's so thin, but it doesn't want to be super heavy. Just a little bit more to clean up the transition point here. That's pretty much what we want. And now before I go any further, while this is all flat, is the easiest time to put the holes in it. I'm going to punch the holes because it's already hot. I don't have to wait for it to cool and go to the drill press. But you can hot punch them. You can drill them with the drill press, drill them with a hand drill. Whatever technique you have and whatever technique you're comfortable with. But this is a time where hot punching is way more efficient and saves you some time in the long run. I'm going to punch two holes for quarter inch bolts. The first one I'm going to punch right about at the transition point from the upper and lower hook. And the second one I'm going to punch towards the lower hook, which is the longer end of the two here. And if you're quick, you get both of these done in one heat. If it takes a couple of heats per punch. That's not a big deal either. That one's got the slug still on the back side of it. There we go. Now these need to fit quarter inch bolts. So I've got a quarter inch bolt here. Hopefully it doesn't get too hot. And it fits both holes. So I'm pretty happy with that. Don't do too much correction here. You'll make ovals instead of rounds. Now it's time to go ahead and make the ball end. Now forging these balls is somewhere where we actually want to encourage a little lack of control. We just start knocking the corners down but I'm pulling a little bit, trying to get this to spiral some. Kind of like crumpling up a piece of paper. This will take several heats to do. Try not to work all in one place, or you'll just end up squishing it all one way, and it won't be a ball, it'll be a squish. But you can see how that is starting to spiral around to make the, the ball shape.
Try to keep the ball hooked over the edge of the anvil, and then you're actually kind of upsetting it down into itself. We're not going to weld this, just it doesn't need it. This is one big controlled cold shut. But you do want to get this fairly smooth. Again, this is for hanging clothes on. You don't want to snag somebody's sweater. Or Armani suit. Not that I can imagine somebody that wears an Armani suit hanging it on a forged hook. Let's take another heat on that and clean it up a little more. You shouldn't need any special ball swedge for this. I have a swedge block that has a little ball swedge. But I don't think it's required for this particular hook. I think we can make it pretty darn round. And remember, you want it also smooth. So that's pretty good. Straighten it back out again. Keep this straight as you work it. If you let it get way off, you're not going to be able to round this up and you stand a greater risk of a stress crack. So now we're going to turn that around to the other end. These bo box jaw tongs don't work anymore because the ball is now in the way. So I'm going to switch to a pair of bolt tongs. If you were paying attention, you probably noticed that I had left a longer end to make the ball out of on this side of the hook. And we ended up with a much bigger ball. I kind of like it better. That one's almost three quarters of an inch round. This one's about five eighths. Not as much bigger as it looks, but it's a pretty obvious difference. So you could go on and make a hook out of this now, but I'm going to let this cool and do just a little bit of filing on it. I want to make sure that there are no sharp rough edges on the balls. And you can do this after it's finished, but I think it's easier to do while everything's still straight and flat. Plus if I choose to go to the belt grinder, it's way easier to do it straight and flat. Now resist the temptation to quench this so that you can handle it faster to file it. 
because this is a good place for stress risers to occur. You don't want to give them any better chance to crack right there. So I'd let this air cool. So I've done just a little bit of filing, grinding. Don't give in to the temptation to grind the balls into submission. If they aren't round, work them at the anvil and get them around. That's the only way you're going to learn to do them. If you just grind them, one, they're going to be a lot smaller, but two, you're not learning as much. So now it's going to be time to, to shape the hook. The long hook gets doubled back on itself for the lower part, and the top hook gets bent out and up. And I'm going to do the top hook first because I think it's easier to do it first. I think the best place to do this is right here in the vise. I want to put the hook I want to bend up with the, the outside of the hook facing me. And I want to drop that top hole down far enough that I know I'm going to be able to get a bolt in it. I hold it with the tongs and I just take a ball peen hammer and push that over. So it leans out just the way I like it. Sometimes it gets a little twist you may have to correct, but that doesn't look too bad. And I think this hook is easier done over the horn. When you bring this up, you want to be conscious of where your bolt holes are. If I block off my bolt hole too much, I'm not going to be able to get a, a bolt in there. And straighten it all up. Now I can't get my fingers in there, but there's still room to get a bolt in. But I think it's a little too close to the top hook, so I'm going to move it down. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to give it a good wire brushing next. I want as much scale, preferably all the scale off of this. This is a an item that wants to be better finished than a lot of things. Then we're going to let this cool so we can, guess what? Put some wax on it. You don't have to wax it. You could put a clear finish on it. You could wire brush it and make it shine a little bit. But you know me, I like to put wax on this stuff. And while you're at it, don't forget to make a couple of decorative bolts. You're going to want to hang this thing on the wall. And you don't want somebody going to the store and buying drywall screws to do it. Yuck. That does it for another project. Another good Christmas gift idea. Hopefully by the time we are done, you will have something for all the people on your Christmas or holiday gift list. But these are also handy in the shop. I end up hanging my coat on the drill press most of the time because I just don't have any place else to hang it. So I think I need to make a few of these for myself, hang them on the wall, and I'll have a place to put my coat. So enjoy. Get out to the shop. Make a few hooks. Make some bottle openers, pokers. Make tools for yourself. Heck, just get out to the shop and start working on your blacksmithing skills. In the meantime, I'd love it if you give a thumbs up to the video. Hit that subscribe button down below. If you feel like donating to the channel, there is a link in the description, but there's no obligation. And stay safe. Have fun.